Let's take a look at the most important step of any BCB DRP plan for any company planning any type of BCB DRP, the business impact analysis. I've said it multiple times in my videos. If you don't know about the business impact analysis, you will fail the CSP exam. So the BIA is important to know in general, not just for this video. In the business impact analysis, directors, vice presidents, team leads, or any other head of department will provide input on what they consider the most important business function to them and what the impact would be if they were to lose that function. And that would be the impact of the business as a whole, not just their department. As in, the director of network operations could say that if their content delivery network solution were to stop working, that would stop the organization's e-commerce business process and would result in a heavy loss of revenue. The director has stated this in a very CISSP way. Because even though the director mentions something technical such as content delivery network, the high level impact is that the company would stop making money if it were affected. That makes management start listening. The director isn't just saying that, hey, the CDN isn't working and we need to fix that. He is also saying that because if the CDN doesn't get fixed, then it will affect how the company itself does business and brings in revenue. That's CISP high level thinking. That's how you have to think for the exam as well as your professional life. For the business impact analysis for Fujifilm, let's first understand again what happened with the disaster in the first place. Fujifilm said they discovered an intrusion on their servers in Japan and immediately had to shut down operations elsewhere around the globe. We don't exactly know what that server was for or what specific business processes it was used for, but let's just say that it was an important server that held valuable data. Whoever owns that data, whoever is the data owner of that data, would identify in the business impact analysis the importance of that server. It's like this. During the business impact analysis, a chief of operations officer would say something to the effect that if this one critical server were to be held hostage by ransomware, the company would not only lose their ability to deliver products globally, but losing the data and trying to recover from it would halt operations as well. In addition, as we stated earlier, the director of network operations could also chime in that if ransomware were to happen on the server, it would require the shutdown of networking capabilities, not only in Japan, but multiple other continents. So we have two high-level managers providing two different critical considerations during the business impact analysis. The chief operations officers will state that if his servers were being held for ransom, the business would come to a standstill and the data would need to be back in order to continue, op continue operations. And the director of network operations says that if ransomware is going on, then multiple networks would need to be shut down in order to reduce further business disruption. We're getting two types of input here in the BIA, a high level one and a technical one. The COO is providing a high level input as it affects the entire company, and the Director of Network, network Operations is providing input on the content deliver, delivery networking capabilities. Both of these will be, have to be addressed in the third stage of the BCP DRP recovery strategies. For the business impact analysis, let's also consider what values and measurements Fujifilm apply to the following terms also at this step. The maximum tolerable downtime, MTD, and the return time objective. Let's look at these two terms, because it's part of our BCB DRP terms in our CISB study guides. You gotta know these. The MTD is how long the business can go without being functional to the point that things cannot be fixed anymore. The return time objective is the amount of time a business can be down, and if brought back up before this acceptable downtime is over, the business can still come back to normal operations without much damage. Given these two definitions, you can already tell that the MTD is higher than the RTO. There's a higher tolerance for the MTD than there is for RTO. No, I'm sorry, that's not right. Um, there's a higher tolerance for the RTO than the MTD, but the MTD is, is a higher time limit than the RTO. The RTO time is shorter than the MTD, 
because you have a short acceptable period of downtime before you are in the territory of the larger MTD of never being able to come back or seriously affecting how your business operations are run. For Fujifilm, and look, Fujifilm is like a huge company. Being down for an entire day or maybe even a few days while senior management would greatly like to avoid being down for days, Fujifilm would probably still survive with an MTD of, say, three days. Just guessing. They have a lot of money. A reputation that has been around for decades, you know, like even during when our parents were young or something. I think this company can go for days without a total hit to the organization. It's not going to bring them down. It would be difficult to recover back, of course, but it's survivable for them. So let's put the MTD of Fujifilm at five days max. The RTO, again, remember, is the amount of acceptable downtime in which if everyone works together to bring a down system back up, the company will not be that adversely affected. Not too seriously, as long as they meet the RTO time. So when the ransomware hit and Fujifilm initiated BCP DRP, they immediately had an MTD of five days and an RTO of, let's say, 24 hours. They can be down for 24 hours and still be in a good position to fully recover. But if it goes on for more than five days, it's not going to be pretty. You don't want to cross the five-day MTD mark. What about RPO, Return Point Objective, and also Work Recovery Time, WRT? Recovery Point Objective, and this relates a lot to this particular scenario, is the amount of data that has been lost since the disaster. How much data has been unavailable since the disaster and for how long? Will your business need to recover data that has been unavailable for minutes, lost for hours, or days? For Fujifilm, especially if they're planning for ransomware as a disaster, they probably want to recover data from the second it was compromised. From the second the ransomware image showed up on their computers asking for Bitcoin or Coinbase or whatever cryptocurrency they're using. Fujifilm probably spent a lot of operating revenue in backup strategies and technologies to make sure that whenever new or current data is flowing through the network in daily normal operations, business operations, the data custodian better make sure that data is also replicated or backed up somewhere it can be accessed immediately. The recovery point objective for Fujifilm was probably like straight zero, zero minutes. For them, data needs to be recovered just seconds after it has become unavailable. Okay. And work recovery time, WRT, this occurs just moments after recovery objectives have been met in the return time objective. And this is when people are just testing the systems or backup and working properly. This also has to be done within the MTD. It's a part of MTD. That's how you measure if the MTT, MTD has been met. If the system is back up and normal just as it was before the disaster, and this includes the testing of systems and making sure things are working properly for everyone, as if almost nothing ever happened in the first place. Just saying systems are online isn't enough. You got to have make sure people are in there to test them to make sure people can actually do their job as they were. To those listening to this video who are in network operations or systems administrations in large corporate environments, you know exactly what I'm talking about when discussing work recovery time. Our job is not over until traffic and systems are working for everybody. All right. So those are some things Fujifilm might have considered during their business impact analysis. Since this is an important step of the BCB DRP process, let's quickly once again just summarize the BIA and how we used Fujifilm as an example for their own BIA. The BIA is where important functions that are critical to the businesses to the business are identified. For Fujifilm, we can pretend that the server that was compromised would be identified as critical to their business function, as well as the network operations that go along with processing data on that server. We also established the numer numerical values of MTD, RTO, and RPO. We put an MTD of 5 days for Fujifilm. And they had a grace period of 24 hours for their return time objective. 
and their return point objective of their data is continuous, or immediately after the disaster, like seconds after. Okay? That is what Fujifilm's BIA might have looked like. Let's take a look at the next step of the BCP DRP, how Fujifilm might have planned their recovery strategies. <laughs> 